Okay, today's lesson is going to be on finishing. Now, the word finishing is a pretty huge, all-encompassing word. Um, so if you say you're going to put a finish on something, you could be talking about a million different processes, everything from coloring the wood to protecting the wood to sealing the wood. There's all kinds of things that are involved in finishing. So we're going to break this down a little bit um, and realize that we're just covering some real basic concepts. You can do coursework, whole courses on finishing and still not cover everything. There's a tremendous amount of information to know here. So this is going to be just kind of a, a good foundational knowledge type of lesson. So you come away with some good basic information. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all, we're going to take finishing and we're going to break it into two parts. The first part is coloring. And the second part is going to be protecting. So sometimes you want to color the wood, sometimes you want to protect the wood. All right. Right now, we're going to just focus on the coloring part. Okay. Coloring, first of all, is an optional step. Okay. You do not have to color the wood. You could take advantage of the natural color of the wood. Some woods have some really um, they're known for their color, like cherry or walnut, um, and you probably wouldn't want to do much to the color on that. You just kind of take it the way it is. I love cherry with a natural finish on it. It looks just fabulous. Same with walnut. Um, and some other woods stain nicely and, or paint nicely, and you can change the color. All right? So you can do lots of different things. So let's talk about the options for coloring. Now we broke finishing into two parts. We're going to take coloring and break that into two parts. One is called stain and the other is paint. So staining and painting are two different options. By the way, we're following a, a handout here that you can also download online and um, follow this information on the handout as well. Now, um, again, remembering that coloring is an optional step, we have two choices within that if we decide to do that. Um, many people understand what stain is, but they use the word wrong. Stain has to do with changing the color. It has nothing to do with protection. If you put polyurethane on the wood, you're not staining. That's over on this side. That's protecting. We're not going to talk about that right now. Staining is where you change the color. Stain comes in many colors. We have a can of stain up here. Um, this is just one can of one color stain. This happens to be cherry. Okay. Um, I could take a piece of pine, which is a light colored wood. There's a chunk of pine. And I could take and apply this to this wood and change the color so it looks different. Okay, so I may have a different colored piece of wood. Um, there are lots of door samples up here, for example, that you might be able to see that have different colors to them. Um, for example, this is a pine door. Not the same color as that piece of wood I just had. It's been stained a particular color. Um, there are several doors up here that are oak. This is oak, this is oak. And so is this one here, and they're all different colors. This one is stained with like a brown colored stain. This one probably has just a little bit of a light stain, and that one looks like it's natural. So you can take the color of a um, piece of wood and change it. Some woods stain nicer than others. Some woods are not easy to stain and have it come out nice. Some woods tend to be a little bit blotchy, but that's a lesson for another day. Um, so stain is... Um, translucent, you can see through it. I'm going to say, I'm not sure if translucent is the exact correct word, but you can see through the stain. In other words, when I stain something, I can still see the grain. In fact, it picks up the grain and it'll, it makes it even more obvious. Okay? Um, you apply stain with a rag. Usually. Now, could you put it on with a brush? Sure. But in our shop, what we usually do is we use a rag. Um, and we have took out a box of rags to show you that. Um, these look like paper towels. They're, they're actually a, a, a heavyweight paper towel. And they're, you know, they're a, a disposable rag of sorts. So this is what we use in our shop for applying stain. We would take one of these off here, fold it up into a pad, dunk it into the stain, put it on the wood liberally, and then wipe off the excess and that's how it's applied. You, it lets the wood soak in what it wants. Okay. Um, 
minimum of one coat. Now, if you read the can, it probably recommends two, but I find if I put on one coat and I like the, the color that I get after one coat, I can stop there. A second coat doesn't make a huge change, but um, it can darken the wood a little bit further if that's what you want. Um, it must have a clear finish over it. I'm going to put on here, it does not protect. So when you put stain on something, all you've done is change the color. You have not offered any protection to the wood. Now you might say, well, my parents stain their deck, you know, every other summer, and that makes the water beat up and it protects the wood. And that's true. But what they're putting on is not just stain. It's a wood preservative with a stain mixed in. Okay, so it's two products in the same can. But regular good old, plain old stain is just going to change the color. And in cabinet work, that's usually how we do it. We don't combine that, those kinds of things together, typically in cabinet work. So regular, when we talk about stain and stain alone, it does not offer any protection. Um, before you do the next step, any additional protection, like polyurethane or something, the stain has to dry overnight. Do not try to put on polyurethane on top of wet stain, because what will happen is the stain will get into the polyurethane as you brush on polyurethane on the wet stain, if I had stained the surface, now I've got stain in the brush. When I go dunk it in my can of polyurethane, I'm transferring the stain into the can of polyurethane and tinting that polyurethane. So that's, you want to let that dry before you put on your coat of polyurethane after that. Um, wood, um, wood will not take stain if it has glue on it. Let's, so let's say you had a piece of wood chip out or you assembled something and the little glue squeezed out and you wiped it off. When you wipe it off, you're really not getting it all off. Some of it you're actually wiping in and sealing the pores of the wood. And since stain works by soaking into the wood, it's not going to soak in where the glue is. So the trick is to stain first and then assemble. On a previous um, video, we talked about making a table and we made aprons and legs. So before I put these aprons and legs together, I'm going to stain them separately let the stain dry and then put it together. So if I get a little glue squeeze out, the wood already has the color in it. But if I was to assemble this first and then come back the next day and stain it, where the glue squeezed out, it won't take the stain, it'll look white, even if I wipe it off with a wet paper towel, because it always leaves some behind and it just won't take the stain the same way. So you want to stain first. So best to stain before assembly, in most cases. Sometimes you can't do that, but in most cases you can. All right. So these are some things to think about when it comes to stain. Now, we talked about application of this particular finishing product, stain. I'm going to give you a little general thing right off to the side here. Um, I'm going to write down methods of application. In other words, how do you put any finishing product onto the wood? Okay. And for example, we just said stain gets applied with a rag. Well, any product that's a, that soaks into the wood, so if it soaks in, you want to apply it with a rag. Okay? Finish, uh, stain rather, oil finishes, all, you put them into the wood, the wood absorbs what it wants, and then you wipe off the excess. It goes on with a rag. You're not leaving a film on top. Any kind of a coating finish or film you want to put on with a brush or a spray gun. Okay, Because if it's a film that you're going to put on there and you're going to leave it until it dries, like if you painted something, you know, you're not going to touch it with your fingers. You're going to, after you put, you brush it all on there, you kind of leave it so it has no brush marks or anything, no drips. You leave it, you let it dry overnight without touching it. You want that film to be perfect, so you have to put it on with something that's going to leave an even film. So you can brush it on, or in industry, a lot they spray with a spray gun. So either way, or you can buy a can of spray paint. Right? You spray on a finish with a can of spray. Um, so that's how that works. Now, when, when I say it's applied with a rag, for example, if I was making a large piece of furniture and I was going to stain it, I might take a brush and apply the the stain to the, the object with the brush just because it goes on faster that way. 
but I have to take at some point a rag and wipe off the excess. But very often, smaller projects, I just use a rag to put it on and to wipe it off. So that's when I say applied with a rag. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? But film finishes where you really need a perfect surface, you cannot take a rag and put it on evenly because it's going to come out thick in some areas and thin in another, and it's going to look horrible. So film finishes, anything that goes on as a film, brush or spray, anything that soaks in as a rag. So you don't have to in memorize individual um, products as to how you put them on. Stain soaks in, so we use a rag. Okay. So let's continue. Let me just kind of look over my notes and make sure I didn't miss anything here. Talked about the fact that it doesn't protect. You can see through it. It penetrates the wood or soaks in. Again, when you put the stain on, make sure you apply it liberally. Make sure the wood can soak up as much as it wants. Don't be stingy with the stain as you apply it. Otherwise, you'll end up with dark spots and light spots. Minimum of two coats. It has to dry between coats. And we have to put something over it to protect it. Okay, and the stain that we use, you need a minimum of four hours for drying time. All right, now the other option for coloring is paint. Okay, paint now kind of actually crosses the line between coloring and protecting, a co uh, coloring and protecting, right? Because it colors the wood and it protects. Because when you paint something, you're, you're essentially changing its color or giving it a color, but you're also putting enough of a film on it that it's going to protect. So it does two things, okay? And it's opaque for starters. What does opaque mean? Well, opaque means you can't see through it. If I took stain, uh, paint and painted one of these boards here, you would not see the grain anymore. The grain would be hidden. Right? And sometimes that's appropriate. It depends on what you're making. Um, but very often you use wood because you want to see the grain. But there are places, places and applications where painting it is appropriate. Okay. Um, now, paint creates a film on top. So how would we apply that? Well, if it's applied with a film, if it's a film, it's applied with a brush or spray. Minimum number of coats is two. Now, as we talk about other products, as we go through this, the minimum number of coats on almost everything is going to be two. The only thing that has a minimum of one coat is stain. So it's another kind of a blanket thing you can remember to make this a little easier to remember. So most things need two coats minimum. Stain, you can get by with one coat if, you, if the color is the way you want it. And the reason is, when you put a coating on something, let's just kind of come over here and we'll draw a little picture. Let's say this is the surface of the wood, right? Let's say we've enlarged this, you know, a hundred times, and we're looking at this really, really close. After you sand it and you touch it, it says, oh, this feels really nice and smooth. Well, if you look really close, you see there are still little fibers there that they're really, really soft. You don't feel them. So when you run your hand over it, it just feels like a smooth surface, almost like your cat. If you pet your cat, you don't feel every fiber of the, care, the cat's fur. It just feels soft. Same thing with the wood. Now, after you put on a coat of finish, all right, what's happening now these little fibers are getting coated with whatever finish you put on them, the paint or the polyurethane or whatever it happens to be. And now, when that dries, those fibers are no longer smooth, they're stiff. And when you run your hand over it, it's going to feel like you didn't sand it. You're going to go, what happened? This feels rough. Well, that's what's happening is you've coated those soft fibers and they're no longer soft. So um, that's going to be rough. So what you have to do before you put on the second coat we do what's called a scuff sand. Scuff sand. You take some fine sandpaper and you just go over it lightly. Usually, I don't even use a sander. I just take a piece of sandpaper, wrap it around a, a block of wood, give it a quick once over, and it's literally once or twice over the piece of wood. It takes two seconds to snap those little fibers off. And now you can have a nice smooth surface again and you can put your next coat of finish on it and it'll come up smooth. If you don't scuff sand it, it's going to stay rough. But that's kind of why you need two coats. Now, this doesn't happen with stain. Not quite sure why, but it doesn't. But with paint and all the other protecting finishes we'll talk about later, this does. So after that first coat, even with paint, it pays to give it a quick scuff sand to get that roughness away. 
and you'll feel it after it dries on the next day. Um, quick scuff sand and then put your second coat. It'll look real white and fuzzy after that scuff sand just from the sanding, but that second coat will clean that right up and it'll, and it'll come out really, really nice. So that's an important step, right? So paint, it's opaque, coats the wood, it creates a film. So we apply it with a brush or a spray gun, minimum of two coats and um, painting can be done after assembly. We set the stain before you put it together. But painting, I can do after assembly. Why is that? Well, what happens during assembly? That glue squeezes out, you wipe off the excess glue. Now you have this transparent film of glue that won't accept stain, but the paint will go right over it. So it doesn't affect the way the paint looks. So you can assemble, like if I was making this little table, I could assemble the whole table, if I'm gonna paint it. And then when it's all done, as long as I don't have any drips of glue, obviously you'd see that through the paint. But if I wipe it off, even though wiping it leaves a, it kind of seals the wood, it's all right. The paint will still stick fine to the glue and it'll go right over it and you won't even notice it, all right? So painting can be done after assembly, um, sometimes a lot better. So this is the coloring side of finishing. You've got, again, it's, it's optional. Stain does not protect the wood, paint does. Stain goes on with a rag. Paint goes on with a brush or a spray gun. Paint is opaque. Stain you can see through, stain one coat, paint at least two coats. Sometimes you need three just to get it to cover everything, depending on what you're doing. And on our next video, we're going to be talking about the protecting side of this finishing process.